Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And today I am in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about split toning. I love split toning. I'm talking an all caps kind of love. In fact, I was thinking, you know, one of the first videos I did on YouTube is actually about split toning in Lightroom. I've been using it for years and years. And uh, anyway, it's a very powerful tool. It's great at helping you control colors, which I love. And I've been mentioning in a couple of videos that I will do a split toning video. Here's a split toning video in Luminar Neo. Let's get going. I'm going to walk through what it is, how it works, when I use it, and talk about why I use it. The why is kind of obvious, which is adjust colors and enhance colors. But let me show you some examples. I've got a photo here, and I've already done a tiny bit in the uh, develop tab. So I took it from that to that. A little bit of contrast. I darkened it a little bit. It was too bright. And what I want to do is go into well, it's called toning here in Neo, but it's called split toning in like every other product. So um, there's a couple of things to be aware of. And the, uh, well, let me just show you. There's an amount, right? It defaults to 50. There's a shadows and highlights section with the saturation and hue. And then there's a balance slider. Let me walk through all of these. What I normally do is use split toning to enhance a few different kinds of things in a photo, or I should say different kinds of photos. In this case, I've got a landscape that's also a sunset. Those two can be separate. It could be a landscape that's not a sunset, or it could be a sunset that's not a landscape. But when they come together, like in this one, it's a very powerful tool to help you really enhance the mood and the look of said sunset. So what it does, it's called split toning because you may know that like you can add a tone, like a sepia tone to an image. Well, that's applying to the whole image. Split toning, it's split because you're separating the highlights from the shadows and you're picking a color basically and an amount. That's what these two sliders are here. If you look on this uh, underneath where it says highlights and shadows, you've got a saturation, which is the amount and a hue, which is a color. And you drag those sliders to the appropriate places to do whatever it is you want to do to the highlights or the shadows. So in a photo like this, I'll make sure I'm clicked on highlights. And once you start dragging the saturation slider, the hue slider will activate, which allows you to go pick the color for the uh, section of the photo that you're adjusting, which would be the highlights or the shadows. So it's really all about picking a color, if you will, and applying it to that tonal area. What I want to do in this case is warm up this sunset. It was a beautiful sunset, but a lot of the pinks and the kind of the warmer tones are kind of muted. I want to bring those back up. And so I'm going to start in highlights and the hue is defaults uh, at zero, which as you can see here, if I move this, you can see on the left, the hue is really red to the left and it goes through yellow, green, blue, pink, and then kind of back over to the red. I'm just going to leave it all the way to the left at red. Saturation just drags more and more of that into that tonal area. Again, I'm on highlights. So that's the tonal area that we're adjusting. I'm at saturation of 47. The more I go, the more intense it gets. Truthfully, that looks gorgeous to me. Now, it might be a little too much to you. That's understandable. But you can come in and take the hue and just adjust accordingly. If it's too much red, say you want a little bit more of kind of orangey yellow, you start dragging it this way, and you can see that that's adjusting. Again, still in the highlights, but you have the ability to make edits here. I'm going to go with a hue that's more in the red because it's kind of looking kind of pinkish. By the way, if you go over here, you get basically back. It's kind of like a circle uh, at the far end. To me, 360, I'm getting the same look as I got at zero. But up to that, I might get a little bit more pink here in the 288 realm. And then saturation, again, drag more of that. I'm getting a slightly different look than I had at a lower saturation and a different hue, of course, because it's a different saturation level and a different color effectively. So that's how I use it on sunsets. Now, you can also go in and adjust shadows. I very rarely will add warmth to shadows. In this case, I don't really want to do that. I will often instead pick a little bit of a blue, which is usually around the 230, and add some of that into the shadows. I don't want to add too much because I get a really saturated, you know, really deep blue there, which actually looks kind of interesting. But I might go a little bit middle, if you will, maybe 40 or 50, whereas in highlights, I was higher here. And in fact, I'm going to go back to red, and I'm going to do something about like that. And then in shadows, I'm going to go maybe, maybe a little bit higher. And you can kind of see what I'm doing. Let me show you the before and after for this filter. That's what it looked like before I hit it with split toning. That's what it looks like now. Again, maybe too intense, 
And hey, if it's too intense, guess what? That's what the amount slider is for. If it's not intense enough, drag it to the right. And this is basically, I'll call it opacity, for lack of a better word. This is the opacity of what you've done with the shadows and highlights right here. So at 100, it would be really intense. It defaults to 50, and I will admit, I rarely move this because I make adjustments down here with the amount of the saturation. But this is a good way to say, hey, I really like that, but it's a little too intense, and I don't know how to fiddle with the saturation sliders in both the highlight and the shadow zone, so I'm gonna fiddle with the amount instead, basically reduce the opacity, and as I continue to go left, you can see it's getting less and less until I get to zero, in which case I've got none of it. So that's a Again, I think of it as an opacity slider. Defaults to 50 can be useful, but admittedly, I don't use it a whole lot. But the other slider to be aware of is the balance slider. And this is basically the balance between the shadows and the highlights. So if you go left, you can see the photo's getting more blue, and that's because I've got blue in the shadows. I'm balancing more towards the shadows, and I can reset, uh, double click to get back to zero. And if I go to the right with the balance, I'm getting more of those warmer tones because the right side is highlights and that's where all the warm tones are. So an easy way to remember balance is the left is shadows because shadows is the left button here. And going to the right impacts more of the highlights because the highlights is the right button here. So this is the balance between the edits you've done in highlights or shadows, and which way do you wanna go? Do you like that, but you want a little bit more of that warm tone overall? Okay, I'm gonna slightly tilt the balance to the highlights, or do you want a little bit more of the cooler tones? Okay, then I'm gonna slightly tilt the balance to the shadows. This is all a delicate dance, season to taste, all those things I always say, but use the saturation amount to hit the tonal areas with the hue that you've selected, and then use amount and balance to fiddle with it, for lack of a better word, to get it looking just right, to dial it in exactly how you wanna make it look. So that's how it works, that's how I use it on a sunset. I'm gonna give you two more examples of how I use this to impact the look of my photos. Okay, here's a photo from Nashville, a long exposure, and as I hit the before and after, you can see I've done nothing to this photo, but this is a perfect example of how I use split toning because there's a lot of yellow, a lot of warm tones that happens in cities a lot. These street light kind of things always look yellow in photos. And while you can use temperature and tint to make adjustments to the photo, and I think that's a good idea, you can also use toning. So in the highlights, I might come in here and take the saturation up, but move that hue away from the warm tones and get it closer to the cool tones because I want to cool off some of those brighter areas which are the highlights. I'm gonna make them a little cooler and get away from the yellow. So you can see I've done a little bit of that. There it is before and there it is now. And at the same time, I might do the exact same thing with shadows. Again, around 230 or so is a good place to start with blues. And then you can just drag this to the right and you can see now my shadows are getting bluer. So if you look at the complete before and after of the photo, there it is, really yellow. Nothing wrong with yellow, it's great in sunsets. I don't like it in street scenes very much, but there it is, a yellow street scene, and there it is, a bit cooler version of a street scene. So toning or split toning can be super helpful there. Uh, one more example for you I wanna walk through. Okay, here's somewhat of an intimate nature scene, and what you may often see, I see this look a lot, is people take scenes like this and they create a really cool kind of overall kind of greenish blue kind of look to give it a certain specific kind of mood. To me, I look at this photo and I definitely see a lot of green, but I see a fair amount of warmth, like in the rocks and the rocks that you can see kind of underneath the water and the waterfall, there's a lot of warmth there and I wanna cool it off, make it look kind of like a mysterious, moody kind of overall feel to the photo. So what I'm gonna do is get into the highlights and shadows, make some adjustments. Now, one thing I'm finding in beta at least is I've got to click once on the amount in order to sort of activate this highlights and shadows section. So if I don't have it turned on, I can't get to that saturation and hue in either section. But once I click here, it is seemed, seeming to activate it. I don't know if that's because it's beta or not, but whatever, it's easy enough. So saturation, I don't want reds and warm tones, right? I'm not doing to highlights here what I might do in a sunset. This is an intimate kind of cooler thing. So once again, I'm going to the blues and that's maybe around 230. That's kind of the blue that I like. And I might put a little bit of that into the highlights 
Now, that's hitting the water, so be careful. You don't necessarily want blue water, but you can cool it off by going, you know, maybe mid to high numbers, but not going all the way. But the fun part comes in when you go into the shadows, and that is you can experiment with these green and blue hues to get the overall mood, mood of the photo looking a bit more green or blue. So green for me in this one is a little too green. I like it a little bit more blue, but as I start to drag the hue, I'm at about, you know, not quite 200, whereas 230 is where I go for the richer blues. But as I drag this saturation slider more, you can see it's kind of hitting some of those different areas. And again, it's just a bit of a dance where you're kind of moving things around, uh, experimenting with the saturation and the hue to get the look that you want. But here I am at 209, and I've got a really cool kind of bluer, the greens are rich. It's not blue, but it's cool, if that makes sense. So if I show you the before, See what I'm saying now? It's a lot warmer overall look, but now I've got a more intimate feeling, a cooler, like I've found this hidden little waterfall in the forest, which is actually what I did. This was in New Mexico. We were hiking and I could hear water. I just kind of larked off the trail and found this and took a shot. But if you take a look at it, the before, quite a bit warmer, all those yellowy kind of orange rocks, and now quite a bit cooler overall because I use blues in both the highlights and the shadow tonal areas to get that look. So that's something that I see quite a bit where people are creating these intimate kind of nature scenes and that's a way to go about doing it. That's it for split toning, my friends. It's a lot of fun, incredibly powerful tool. I use it on a lot of different photos. These were three examples today, but I highly recommend spending some time playing with it. Experiment on lots of different photos. It can be used in lots of different ways. And of course, don't forget, you can use it multiple times in Neo, and you can just close the tool, reopen it, mask it in if you want to do different things in different parts of the photo. Lots of fun, lots of power, lots of control over colors, which you may know if you've been here before, I like to control. Split toning is a way I do that. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope it helps. Appreciate you stopping by, hanging out. Let me know if you have any comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, my friends, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.